the Mayan calendar predicts the end of time to occur in 2012. It's the apocalypse. The Mayans knew about it.
they're going to get six weeks of warning, I think maybe they might be lucky if they get six days of warning, and more than likely it'll be two days of warning, and uh, they were told a month and a half ahead of time so that that way they'd have time to decide what they wanted to put in their bags. Mm -hmm. And uh, that six weeks of warning is nonsense. I mean, why would they give them six weeks of warning knowing that they'll blab the whole thing to everybody they ever knew prior to uh, being uh, packed up? I think I think they'll be lucky if they get one or two days of warning. They'll get called and say, it's time to go, and they'll have 15 minutes to get ready to head out. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, uh, you know, knowing how these guys operate, I don't believe that they'll get two days of warning. I mean, they might get one day or six hours or, you know, a half day or one day or two days. I don't think they'll get more than two days. I mean, really, do you? I think they have a good idea what the trajectory of this thing is, but I think we're not really going to see it until it's right up on our ass. Well, I'll tell you what. That would be my guess, that we won't see it until it's on us. But I will tell you one thing. We'll have some really good warnings if everybody's looking up and paying attention. First off, they'll notice red dust on the windshield of their vehicles. And at first, it'll be light dust, indicating that it's uh, uh, 10, 15 hours away. If they notice that the dust is real noticeable on their windshield, they can bet that it's in less than 10 hours away. If they have heavy red dust on their windshields, it's only a matter of hours away, and they better immediately take cover because they're out of time. It's too late to decide to load this or that up. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I don't think there'll be a lot of warning, but, uh, you know, when we were looking at it on the Hubble, this red dust field appeared to be going out at least as far as maybe two times the size of the planet. So, uh, yeah. you know, that means that it's probably a few hundred thousand miles going out into space around it, all the way around it, which means that just before it arrives, which will be a matter of hours, we'll start seeing red dust coming out of the atmosphere onto everything. Where And, of course, a vehicle windshield would be the best thing to spot it on because then you'll be able to see its true color and realize that you're seeing the red iron oxide dust from it. And that'll be probably between that and the earthquakes, and uh, I think probably uh, as, it, as it approaches, we'll start to hear the electromagnetic interference between it and us uh, maybe see bizarre events in the sky with the clouds and, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, uh, colors flashing around in the atmosphere. Uh, 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 there, there'll probably be quite a variety of warnings that it's approaching and that it's within hours of, uh, passing. It's going to be a lot more, uh, you know, the CIA people I talked to said that they're expecting at least a, uh, 220 to 230 degree roll, maybe a little more. Uh, they fully expect the center of the United States to be at the equator when it's over. No, no, no. I'm saying uh, 220 to 230. That's what they're guessing. But then again, you got to remember. That's still a pretty good clip. Yeah. Well, you know, this thing's going to go by and give us a spin, and that's where we're going to supposedly stop. Uh, they told me they ran 10,000 case scenarios on the on shifting the planet upside down. They did it 10,000 times on the Earth. They tried different locations to see what they'd come up with, and it averaged out at 220 to 230-degree roll. So, you know, uh, I think probably uh, them knowing the trajectory isn't, I don't think that's a matter of question. I'm sure they know the trajectory. I'm sure they know the exact minute it's going to show up. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I've heard a lot of stories that I would only tell you in private about this because it's so far over the top, most people would go into immediate denial if they heard it. So, you know, the most I can say is that they better be expecting at least a 180 to a 220 degree pole roll when this happens. And as far as that bulge around the center of the planet, 
I got news for everybody. This thing is going to do a very fast roll, and that water is going to go everywhere. The Lord warned you. The oceans will roar from pole to pole. Is there some part of that nobody understands? The average depth? Yeah, what's the average depth of the ocean around 10, the world? 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet. It's, a, it's about two, two and a half miles. That's well, the average the depth of the ocean. Although the depth does increase at the equator because there's spots where it's averaging seven miles deep. So that right. tells you there's a bulge at the center of the planet. Which would be, uh, man. Now just imagine the North Pole rolling into the position of the South Pole. That means that the North Pole has got to go through that bulge before it can reach its final resting place. So we're going to have seven miles of water doing some serious washing around on the land. So let me let me ask you this. If we did a 220-degree pole shift, would that be an instantaneous pole shift, or would no. that be a... No, it's going to uh, be... As I understand, it's going to happen over the course of uh, uh, half an hour to an hour. And actually, they said 20 well, that's pretty, minutes. That's pretty instantaneous. <laughs> that's pretty fast, yeah. That's uh, pretty fast. Uh, we're going to see probably, we're going to probably see a uh, uh, 400 mile an hour wind on the surface. Uh, we're going to see big time water splashing around. Uh, we're going to see earthquakes that are so bad that it'll set off every uh, volcano ridge on the entire planet. Every volcano ridge on the entire planet will be uh, going off. The tectonic plates will be being jerked apart by probably miles apart as the surface of the Earth will be like a bowl of jello. It'll be flexing around so hard that every tectonic plate everywhere on the planet will open. The volcanoes will be shaken so hard that they'll start erupting. Uh, it's going to be one horrific scenario after another. So you're looking at hell on earth here. This ain't going to be no joke. This is going to really eliminate a lot of people because uh, either they didn't know about it or they didn't believe or, you know, whatever the case may be. The It's going to be a real shame for them because uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, when Nebiru rules the planet upside down, it's going to kill uh, 4 billion people. And uh, that's that's the first day, and uh, the rest will survive on, but very few survivors will still be around when the weather finally gets good enough to get a full growing season because they just uh, uh, were not prepared enough to make it, and that's gonna that's it's gonna eliminate a lot of people. I mean, I wouldn't be under these underground facilities that uh, all of these. Uh, Elite people think they're going to hide out in because they're going to be torn to pieces by the uh, flexing of the planet. I mean, the crust of this planet is going to really act up big time. And uh, there won't be any survivors in those underground facilities. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I really don't think that uh, the survivorship of this will be real high because of the denial. The level of denial in this country is obvious by... Department of Homeland Security planning to uh, fight everybody. Uh, the, U the United States government has been terrorizing everybody around the world forever and ever. The churches are all in denial. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, the Chinese, they take babies and cook them up into stew and stuff. Uh, it's taken over this planet. And that's why I said about the churches being asleep. The churches have oh. not protested this at all. And uh, they're going to pay dear for having kept their mouth shut and been politically correct. This is the one that's going to cost them their ass. And one evil thing stacked on top of another. And all of these people that have been condoning all of this stuff, they don't talk about it. They just, you know, they own stock in the companies and they think they're getting rich. And what they're actually doing is getting ready to die. And they don't even know it. I tell people all the time, guess what? You're probably not going to be alive this time next year, so uh, don't worry about what you're doing. Well, but, you know, one of his favorite subjects is to talk about giants, you know, because uh, our uh, our but military has uh, 
uh, ran into quite a few of them in caves in the Middle East over there. And yep. uh, they have came across several ones that were alive. They've even managed to capture a couple of them. They've had to kill a few of them because these guys aren't little guys. Uh, apparently they caught one recently that was, uh, I don't know, I guess about 14 feet tall, and uh, they had a hell of a time subduing him. Uh, they discovered that their small arm spire were not very effective against these guys. But, uh, you know, when I think about the size of that spaceship that I saw last year going uh, across the mountains here in Colorado, uh, I don't know how big these guys are. Steve Quayle says they're real big, that uh, some of them are as tall as 38 feet. Uh, this thing was big enough to where it could have had a few thousand of those 38-foot tall guys in it, and it would have been no problem because I'm telling you, this thing was at least a thousand feet in diameter, maybe more, and at least a couple of miles long. I mean, it was big. I don't have any trouble uh, understanding that there could be races out there that are real big guys, and there and 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 there's no way that you're going to be able to to fight these guys to kill them or anything. Uh, you know, if you think about. What happened, when was that, about 15, 10, 15 years ago, that big one landed in Russia right in the town square, and uh, these great big guys got out of it and were working on it while the whole town stood around and watched and went, holy shit, look how big these guys are. And they were great big guys. I guess they were about 12 feet tall or something, and uh, they were working on their spaceship. And when they got it repaired, they flew off in it. But, uh, you know, they were. it landed right in the middle of the town square. <clears throat> and everybody in the whole town thought. And uh, it was a couple of mentions on the news about it, but not really too much, mainly in the uh, little rag newspapers and stuff were uh, pictures of it. And a lot of people took pictures of it. They took pictures of the guys that were working on it, and they were great big suckers. So, you know, are there big guys out there? Yeah, there are. Well, the Bible says we're going to see all kinds of uh, stuff happening. And I can tell you... Uh, these military people have been so far out of control for so long, uh, I think the American people would be terribly shocked if they ever got away from their vomit TV and started checking out what their government's been doing. They would not only be horrified, but they'd be in shock and horrified at the same time just how really far out of control these people actually are. And all of this stuff has been kept a secret because the American people are willfully stupid. And this is going to come home to haunt them. I can guarantee you there's going to be trouble on the horizon they can't even imagine. And I can tell you, I just the thought of uh, 14, 15-foot tall guys uh, dressed in military uniforms uh, 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 doing God knows what, I mean, I've always thought since day one that the pyramids were built prior to the last pole shift and uh, and that they were stacked up probably by these big guys because there's really no other explanation for how stones that big got mounted up. I mean, you look at some of those things and the uh, architecture and design and construction is just so far over the top. And now we've got all of these uh, ragheads over there in Egypt talking about they want to tear them down. Yeah, well, I was you know what? that earlier today. Yeah, this is just insanity. Uh, they took out uh, their dictators around the world. They've been taking out the dictators so that they can put in their dummies and uh, get their one world order thing going, which is how they've got to do it. They've got to take out all the uh, leaders are in every country and then and then place their Rothschild uh, dictators in, in position. And, of course, you know, uh, uh, that'll bring in their one world order because they'll all work for the same guy. But, uh, uh, you know, now they've got these morons down there in Egypt that want to tear down the pyramids. They want to do this. They want to do that. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how they plan on doing it. You know, what, are they going to put a nuclear weapon in the thing and blow it up or what? Uh because they're sure as hell not uh, equipped to dismantle it uh, manually. They'll have right. to blow the things apart. Uh, they well, put... Above all the families on earth, Hashem loves us eternally, as a father loves his son. My firstborn son, how Israel, 
And that is why he sends us shockwaves. As our sages say, calamity comes to the world only for the sake of Israel. God reveals his might so that we will wake up and prepare ourselves for the demise of this illusionary world and for the beginning of a spiritual world, the world of Mashiach. Since the beginning of the last century, we have seen drastic changes around the world. Bloodshed wars, Holocaust, newborn Israel, the communist regime falls along with the Berlin Wall, technological advances break all records, cell phones, computers, internet. In the past decade, things are happening at an even greater pace. In recent years, not a day goes by without earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, floods, epidemics, terror attacks, plane crashes. The world is going crazy. God is shaking up the world to show us that we are not in control. כמעט רגילים לראות את התמונות האלה, אסונות טבע, רעידות אדמה, שיטפונות. התרחשותו של אסון הטבע, אחד מהקטלניים בעשורים האחרונים. In the weeks after the London subway terror attack, as wind chills hit negative 24 in Chicago Thursday, Lake Michigan started to look more like the Arctic Sea. A little before 11, we started getting reports about a fireball in the sky. And this is the coldest February on record. The National Weather Service has confirmed that yes, indeed, a tornado has touched down. Now they're telling us two tornadoes. <laughs> Aggressions whereby you have transgressed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. And why should you die, O house of Israel? This is a wake up call for all Jews. Please save yourself. God is calling us to wake up. And many shall be purified and made white. But the wicked shall do evil. And none of the wicked will understand. But the wise will understand. Our sages keep telling us over and over again that in the end of days there will be a selection. Not everyone will merit reaching the finish line. And so there will be in all the land the word of Hashem. Two portions will be cut off and perish and the third will be left in it. And I will bring the third into fire and purify it as one purifies silver and I will refine it as one refines gold. This is what the prophets promise us. Only the righteous, the modest ones, only those who truly attach themselves to Hashem and follow His ways, only they will last and merit the eternal life in the world to come.
United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. We've got to bring the terrorists to justice. We cannot. Over the past 24 hours, you will have seen the military plan start to take shape on the ground. What we are looking to do is to achieve a series of effects to which the Iraqi regime simply cannot respond. יותר מ-300 טילי שיעור, מחציתם נורו ממטוסים, והיתר מספינות בים התיכון ובמפרץ הפרסי. האמריקאים כל היום, גם במסיבת העיתונאים של תומי פרנקס, היום מתגאים בכך שזו המערכה עם הטילים והפצצות המדויקות ביותר שנראו אי פעם. זה אכן נכון מדויק, הדברים האלה? אנחנו רואים את כל הפצצות העצומות האלה בבגדד, ועדיין באופן יחסי, באמת רק באותן נקודות. אני רוצה להגיד שני, שתי נקודות בקשר לדבר הזה. האחד, שעד עכשיו שוגרו אלף טילי, טילי שירותים. הייתה תקיפה מאוד מסיבית אתמול בלילה, 70 טילי טומאו נגד האנצר הנפלא המודיעה עקב התקפת טילים על ישראל הופעלה אזעקת אמת. כשעלה הבוקר על בגדד עוד התעמר מעל העיר עשן כבד, תוצאה של ההפגזות בלענים. Sean Adel to Batabai report, scientists detected various microwave waveforms coming out of Antarctica that they say could be a precursor to a mega quake. What we're viewing here is a second wave that occurred May 15, 2017. The first one was April 2nd. On May 26, 2017, just a couple of days ago, Mimic caught a third mysterious wave beaming out of that region. And this is it here, as we can see, most of that wave is close to the San Andreas fault line, starting here in South America. If you make a line down into Antarctica, the path of the wave anomaly crosses the mysterious Princess Elizabeth Station which is situated at the base of pyramid structures. This leaves us to guess if the wave anomalies are coming from this station or from an unknown source near the station. But one thing is for sure, something in that area is creating this anomaly which they shoot out into the Pacific Ocean. More specific, this anomaly is directed straight over or close to the Cascadia subduction zone West United States, that's the area, of course, of the San Andreas Fault, California. Although the Cascadia subduction zone has not produced an earthquake since 1700, it's built upon pressure. It is building pressure where the Juan de Fuca plate is subsiding underneath the North American plate. This is where the geologists and seismologists are waiting for the big one to take place. Scientists are predicting that there is about a 40% chance that a mega thrust earthquake of a 9.0 magnitude in this fault zone will occur in the years ahead. 
Although the Cascadia subduction zone has not produced an earthquake since 1700, it's building up pressure where the Juan de Fuca plate is subsiding underneath North America. Currently, there is no proof, but it looks like someone or something at Antarctica is manipulating or altering the weather in the Pacific Ocean region for whatever reason. You can see the embedded video below to show the latest wave anomaly caught on May 26, 2017. This is by Sean Adel on your Newswire. Moss tissue and even Do you know cells, why traces of vegetation in microorganisms found in drilling in Antarctica are dated by scientists for the most part, at least 40 million years old? Simply, that as long as they do not accept the theory of Charles Hapgood and Albert Einstein of the displacement of the Earth's crust and confirmed by the message transmitted by the Great Pyramid of Cheops which explains that the Antarctic continent has moved several thousand kilometers to the south about 12,000 years ago. Scientists have only the choice to go back 40 million years with the theory of plate tectonics. For Antarctica to be at a good latitude to be covered by lush vegetation. The theory of plate tectonics which was by the way was completely rejected is described as far-fetched by the scientific community of the time and finally accepted only in 1960. We will show you in this video scientific evidence From that the Antarctic has undergone a gigantic cataclysm with titanic volcanic eruption and giant tsunami. Following the displacement of this continent, which snow. destroyed all the vegetation and that previously existed and decimated the civilization that populated this land about 12,000 years ago, on Earth. The images you see come from a documentary about scientists doing research in Antarctica that you will find the link in the description of the video. In front of the cameras this researcher takes a shovel and digs a few centimeters below the surface of the Antarctic frozen, and watch what he discovers. Melted. This volcanic ash that erupted from a volcano and has been sitting there for millions of years. It shows no chemical alteration, which you'd expect if there were any amount of liquid meltwater over that duration. The fact that it's dry and pristine tells me it's always been here, which is incredible. This volcanic ash that erupted from a volcano and it's... A phenomenal quantity of volcanic ash in perfect condition, just below its surface, and which witnesses a huge volcanic eruption in a recent past. Now, in your opinion, at what depth the traces of vegetation were discovered? 400 feet? 900 feet? Or 4,000 feet? Here is the answer. We are now with another group of researchers on another part of the island. In front of the cameras, one of the researchers also digs a few centimeters below the surface of the Antarctic and watch what he discovers. Oh, a leaf. Is that a leaf? There's a leaf right there. <laughs> a leaf imprint in an extraordinary conservation state. But it is not finished. Sweet leaf. And then they find something extraordinary. This is like a, a peat, peat moss, and then if we, you know, take, tease some of this out, they're like freeze-dried. Under the microscope, these brittle mosses are in pristine condition. These moss fossils are not rock, but actual plant tissue, the last vestiges of vegetation from a time when Antarctica was still warm. They were found under a layer of volcanic ash that for even relatively short periods of time in this location. Otherwise, these things are gone. Now, but there are not only plants, there are even pieces there of trees. To be a completely different picture. Exploring East Antarctica, closer to the South Pole, Andrews David Harwood found leaf fossils and pieces of wood. 
Surprisingly, according to Harwood, these date to a relatively recent time, when Antarctica was not only warmer than today, there were plants and trees. This is a piece of southern beach. This wood is not fossilized in the sense that it is petrified. It could still burn. To find the wood and leaves together is pretty phenomenal. But above all, and which reinforce our theory of a violent cataclysm, is that this piece of trees is petrified. Now we go back to see the previous researcher and listen one, well what he actual says. actual plant tissue. The last vestiges of vegetation from a time when Antarctica was still warm. They were found under a layer of volcanic ash. They were found under a layer of volcanic ash. This was found under a layer of ash. This shows once again that Antarctic vegetation, formerly Atlantis, has been destroyed by an unimaginable cataclysm. Which is incredible. Right there. Hey! We find something extraordinary. We're in pristine condition. Pretty phenomenal. All this is nothing extraordinary if you stop to believe that it dates from millions of years. How is it possible to be as blind? But ancient maps, which date from before the official discovery of the Antarctic, clearly shows us the Antarctic to a position much further north close to the African coasts, and without being covered with ice where appear mountains, hills, lake, and river, and even animals on a very rare map, which we will reveal to you in a few moments, and that very few people know. Diri Reis haritalarında Grönland ve Antarktika'nın uzun altı topografik haritalarını da çizdi. Bu mucizevi bir detaydır. O dönemin teknolojisiyle uzunların altında gizlenen kara parçalarını görmek imkansızdı. Ve bu haritaların doğru olduğu 20. yüzyılda sismik teknoloji geliştirildikten sonra fark edilebilir. There is not only the Piri Rice's map, there is also the Orange Vines map, which dates from 153, which is even more detailed. And finally the map of Ferdinand Verbiest, edited in 1674 and offered to the Emperor of China, where the North America is under the ice, and the Antarctic populated by animals. We know by the Egyptian priests, reported by Plato, that those who survived the cataclysm were the men and women who live in altitude at the top of the mountains. The names of these men have been preserved, but the recollection of their actions has perished in consequence of deluges which have not permitted the subsistence of illiterate mountaineers. For the species which survived every time was, as I have said above, that of the mountaineers and illiterates who knew only the names of the masters of the country, and knew very little of their actions. Now, if you look at the map of the Antarctic, where did you think the survivors moved? Obviously, South America was the only possible destination. And this solves one of the mysteries of the American settlement, because the Antarctic, located at the same time, near Africa and the South America, simply explains the history of the settlement of America. Without the need of cross the whole planet, passing near the North Pole, to reach the Strait of Bering. Now second question, if you are a survivor of this cataclysm, where in South America, will you naturally choose to take refuge? The answer is once again to show you that it was built by the survivors of Atlantis. Here is the photo of the walls of the city of Tuanaku, which is visible in the video. Now an extract from a platen, 
where he describes a particularity in the art of building of the Atlanteans. They pulled their stones from the periphery of the central island, and from under the walls, outside and inside, there were white, black and red. And while extracting the stones, they built double ponds dug in the interior of the ground, and covered with a roof by the very rock. Some of these constructions were of one color, in the others they intermingled the stones in such a way as to make a variety of colors for the pleasure of the eyes, and thus gave them a natural charm. You will find all the additional information on our website, as well as in our last book, Pyramid Apocalyptia. Think to share the truth about our history and pay tribute to those men and women who died during this terrible cataclysm. Thank you, and God bless you.